All right, Sunday week three. Not everybody had a good week, but others really smiling. Who were the winners? Who were the losers? You get one of each. JJ, you're first. How about your winner? It is the 3-0 and undefeated Las Vegas Raiders, and I absolutely loved what I saw from the Vegas Raiders. Remember how they went and played the Baltimore Ravens and won in overtime in a multiple possession overtime game. You can't do it again. That doesn't happen all that often. It's almost a coin flip. They did it again against the Miami Dolphins. They got down early. They were able to come back, stave off a nice little comeback by the Miami Dolphins and then kick field goals in overtime. I love what Derek Carr is doing, playing at an MVP level. They say, hey, we're going to put the clamps down on Darren Waller. He says, no problem. I still have Brian Edwards out there. Three catches, 89 yards. Josh Jacobs inactive. That's okay. Peyton Barber can get you 111 rushing yards. And the defense did enough. You want to see the defense play a little bit better, but the fact is they are 3-0 in the most competitive division in football. The Raiders are my big winners. All right. Uh, look, both each of the last two years, the Raiders have had a winning record in the second half. They're off to a 3-0 start maybe this year, a little better talent to maybe finish the job and find their way into the playoffs. Uh, how about you, Ryan, your winner? I'm going with another team in the AFC West. I'm going with the Los Angeles Chargers. Huge win on Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. If you look back to the 2020 season, Justin Herbert's rookie season, they beat them in week 17. Maybe it was a meaningless game. It still counts. But you go back early in the season, week two, Justin Herbert's first start, they should have beaten the Chiefs then. So they can play with the Chiefs. And if you can play with the Chiefs, you can play with anyone. That means you're a playoff team. That means you're possibly a deep playoff team. It starts with your franchise quarterback. Justin Herbert has been out of this world for a season and two games now, and I expect that to continue. And the good news is the defense appears to be back. It starts, of course, with Brandon Staley, the first-year coach, who's a defense coordinator for the Rams, who had so, so much success in a short time there. And now Derwin James is back. You have Bosa. The list goes on and on. And I think for the Chargers to be competitive in that division, it starts with beating the Chiefs. They're looking up at the Raiders right now, which is interesting, but I think this team has a chance to go far in the playoffs. I'll see your Chargers, and I would actually say L.A. Yeah. L.A. beat the two Super Bowl teams last year. The Rams and the Chargers beat the Chiefs and the Bucks. L.A. feeling good uh, in the neighborhood. All right, how about loser? I don't like to call people losers, but you get the point. Who did not have a good week three on Sunday. Ryan. Someone who was disappointed in their performance in week three and probably weeks one and two is Ben Roethlisberger. 39 years old. He looks every bit the 39 year old who just dropped his kids off at soccer practice is going to play in the, the softball, softball beer league because he is not the quarterback we've seen over the last. This throw right here is, oh my word, what are we doing? You have to wonder if he needs the Jameis Winston LASIK surgery because I don't know how you miss Logan Wilson standing in the middle of the field. But this has been a recurring theme, not just these three weeks with Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers, but the final five games and including that sixth playoff game against the Browns last year. And it's hard to watch. And we're to the point now that where I feel like, EK, we need to have conversations about maybe Ben being on the bench. Unfortunately, the backup plan A is Mason Rudolph. Plan B is Dwayne Haskins. And the takeaway from that is that this is not a very good football team, no matter who's playing the quarterback position. Strangest stat line, Najee Harris. 14 rushes, 14 catches. Didn't put it in the end zone. I, I mean, was it good? Was it not? I, I don't know. <laughs> it was a, a very strange. Um, JJ, you're a loser. Yeah, well, Ben Roethlisberger looked like he had the mobility of a cargo ship. My biggest loser, the New York Jets. And it's unfair because you can sort of say this every week with them, but they looked especially bad this week. And I didn't really understand it. The fact is that Joe Douglas has been there for long enough that this offensive line should be better. Th this was a run play that got blown up five, six yards in the backfield for a loss of seven yards right there. That play was sort of emblematic for me of the day. And I know we talk a lot about the pressure that Zach Wilson has on him. Y you should be able to get somewhere close to the line of scrimmage on a run play. They weren't able to, and their leading rusher, Michael Carter, had 24 rushing yards today against the Denver Broncos. Their leading receiver, Corey Davis, had 41 receiving yards against the Denver Broncos. Zach Wilson adds two more interceptions to his league leading total, along with, of course, uh, Trevor uh, Lawrence and Sacks galore, five sacks and uh, less than five yards per attempt. So Zach Wilson, I, I don't know what they're doing around you, Zach. I don't know what the Jets are doing, but they could have been my biggest loser in week one. They may have been. They could have been my biggest loser in week two, but most certainly here in week three, without question, the Jets are my biggest loser. Ryan, I took your uh, Chargers and I expanded out to L.A. JJ, I'm going to take your loser Jets. I'm expanding out to New York. Giants and Jets combined 0-6. <sighs> Ugh. Giants <laughs> lost at home today to Atlanta on Eli Manning retirement day. They reenacted the David Tyree catch. That seemed even longer ago than it really was. 
Uh, it is not good if you're a football fan in Gotham City. They are 0-6. Yikes. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.